Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Arshi Devedi, and I welcome you back to my video. So, in this video, friends, the problem of plastic waste pollution will be discussed by me. See, plastic waste is actually a subtype of solid waste. Okay, and this plastic pollution, which is today being seen as one of the most pressing environmental issues at some point of time in the past, that is around 60 to 70 years back, when it started, when it was you know starting to become a fashion at that point of time. This invention of plastic was considered to be one of the most novel inventions, one of the most, you can say, unique inventions. But today, this plastic is being seen as a big pressing challenge in front of environmentalists in different countries. Now, before proceeding with this video, friends, I would like to tell you that if you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link is given in the description box below. You can also follow me on Instagram, friends. The link of that is also given below. Also, friends, this plastic pollution is a sub type of solid waste pollution. If you want to know about solid waste pollution, I've made a separate video on it. Kindly go to my environment and ecology playlist and there you can find the video on solid waste pollution. <coughs> now what is happening friends, this plastic pollution is evident all over the world and it is especially evident in countries of Asia and Africa. Why? Because this Asia and Africa belongs to the developing lot. And when it comes to the developing lot, see, the recycling rates in this developing countries are low. Got it? Also, the garbage collection systems of these countries are not that much efficient. Garbage collection system of these developing countries cannot be compared to those of the developed countries. Got it? Also, the recycling facilities in these developing countries are not up to the mark of those of developed countries. So, the problem of this plastic pollution is getting way, way severe in developing countries when compared to developed countries. Got it? Now, <clears throat> if we talk about when did this plastic pollution gain acceleration? So, you can say that when World War II ended in 1945, accelerated use of plastics started. This does not mean that before 1945, this plastic was not used. Plastic was used way before that also. But the accelerated use of plastics was started after Second World War. At that point of time, the scientists, people, different countries, they begin to recognize that this plastic has, you can say, uses, uses in a wide variety of areas. For example, this plastic can be used in life-saving devices. For example, this plastic was helpful in making aeronautical app you know aeronautical instruments it was it made space travel possible okay convenience was made very good medical equipments were made through this plastic so a lot of things were happening through this plastic also if you are driving a motorbike the helmet that you are wearing it is also made of plastic so plastic at that point of time was the having a huge huge significance okay and because of that more and more innovations were done in the field of plastics and the use of plastic was intensified. Got it? But there is one form of plastic which is known as convenience plastic. And this convenience plastic is used to make fulfill the requirements of people. But there is a difference friends. See, if a medical equipment is made with the plastic, then this medical equipment is used to treat a lot of patients. But when convenience plastic is made, for example, single-use plastic, for example, the poly bag, the polythene, that poly bag which you take to the market for shipping or when you go to the market, you purchase something and the shopkeeper gives you a poly bag or a polythene. So that is single-use plastics and single-use plastics has emerged as a great problem today. I would like to tell you a fact that if 100 units of plastics are produced in whole world in one year, say we are just supposing it, so if 100 units of plastic is produced in one whole year in the whole world, around 40 units of that is for single-use plastic. That is, people are using it for their own personal uses. So 40% of the use of plastics is it single-use plastic. Many of these products, for example, these plastic bags which we use, the food wrappers, you know, many a time you wrap your food when you are going to office, or you want to store your food for a longer time, you want to keep it warm. So in that case, we use plastics. Now I would like to tell you one example. I would like to give you one example why this utility of single-use plastics cannot be justified. See friends, many times you go to the shopkeeper, you went outside, you, you took one kilo of potatoes, 
that shopkeeper will give you one kilo of potatoes in a polythene, you will take that polythene and come back home. Got it? So, the use of that polythene was to take those potatoes from that shopkeeper, come back to your kitchen. In that kitchen, you will be having a basket, you are going to put your potatoes in that basket and that polythene, which you took from that particular shopkeeper, you will throw it in the dustbin. So, how much time you needed for that polythene? You needed the utility of that polythene to you was few minutes and after that you discard that polythene. Can you imagine for how many years that polythene persists in the environment before getting degraded? It is said, it is estimated that that poly bag persists for around 100 years in our environment. And obviously this persistence is not in a positive manner, it is a negative manner. That discarded polythene is polluting our environment. So do you, can you justify your few minutes use of that polythene which is going to persist 100 years in the environment and now you can imagine how much of these polythenes is used in daily life by people. So you cannot justify it friends. Also many times something happens friends that plastics are being strengthened by adding some additives. For example if there is a normal plastic you add some additives to it and it has some novel plastics this new plastic is formed now why is this new plastic unique because it has added toughness it has added flexibility it has added durability it is you know strengthened so in this case friends this new plastic can be used for more tough jobs for example high amounts of weight can be kept in it stronger materials can be formed in order to hold higher weights or for some other issues but when you are going to strengthen a plastic by using additives, the persistence time of this plastic in the environment will increase. And in some cases, this may increase up to 400 years. That means this discarded material, when it will be out of use, it will take 400 years to break down. And for 400 years, it is going to be as a pollutant in our environment. I will also like to give some more stats to you friends. Most of the plastics that are causing the pollution today, have been made in the last 15 years got it this was a fact that i wrote here see half of the plastics ever manufactured have been made in the last 15 years also the plastic production has increased at a very faster rate in 1950 2.3 million tons of plastics was produced in the world in 2015 around 448 million tons was produced by 2050 it is said that around 900 million tons will be produced so you can see that the this problem has already grown out of proportion it is too big to deal with also the oceans are getting are becoming a new garbage dumps for this plastic pollution for example the oceanic cities of the world it is being estimated that in an year eight metric tons of plastic waste is being discarded into oceans each year so you can very well imagine how precarious the things are got it also there is one more way of polluting the oceans you know the rivers that are flowing through the land and they finally make their way in the oceans. Now, let us take the example of India. An example is Ganges River. This Ganges, it is highly polluted. A lot of you know, waste material is being discarded into it. A lot of plastics are making into it. Now, this plastics will flow with the water of the Ganges and finally make its way to the Bay of Bengal. Now, suppose this is the coastline of India. See here. I'm sorry, I made it a bit but wrong. Let us make it again. Something like this is there. I'm sorry for my wrong figure. Now here suppose this is Bangladesh and here this Ganges is going in Bay of Bengal. Okay. So this is disposing a lot of plastic pollution say in this Bay of Bengal. Now what will happen friends that when this plastic pollution will go in Bay of Bengal or anywhere in the world when the rivers are discarding the pollutants, the plastic pollutants in the ocean water. What is happening that in many of the cases this plastic pollutant will remain confined to coastal areas. Now, what is coastal area? What is contagious area? What is exclusive economic zone? I already told you before. Kindly go and revise it. If this plastics escape into the main ocean, that is they go outside the coastal areas, then due to the ocean currents and due to the other ocean gyre, they can make their way to other continents also. I will tell you just one example of it. There is one Henderson Island here. Kind have a look friends. This is one Henderson Island. You can see the location of this Henderson Island. This is New Zealand. This is Australia and this is Chile. The western coast of 
South America continent. Somewhere in between here is this Anderson, Henderson Island. Now, on this Henderson Island, you need to know friends that this Henderson Island is not inhabited. Nobody is living here. In this Henderson Island, it is being said that plastic items from Russia have been found, from USA have been found, from China have been found, from Japan have been found, from Europe. Now, where is Russia, friends? See, Russia is all over here. This is a big distance from, you can say, Australia, the pollutants have been formed. From USA, the pollutants have been formed. From Europe, Europe is not even visible in this map. From China, these pollutants have reached here. So, you can see, friends, that how far the pollutants have taken, you know, have flowed and reached. So, these pollutants originated in Russia, China, USA. They reach this Henderson Island. You can very well imagine the, you can say, force of this gyre, the Pacific gyre, which has taken the pollutants to this area. Now, there is one more facet that you need to look at. That is microplastics. What is microplastics? When these plastics find their way into the ocean, so obviously they are continuously exposed to water. And because of that, they are continuously exposed to wave action. They are continuously exposed to sunlight. They are continuously exposed to wind. So they are continuously exposed to a lot of external factors and because of it, it breaks down. And when it breaks down and becomes of a size which is less than one inch, it gets convert itself into microplastics. So microplastics are tiny elements because their size is of less than one inch. These microplastics are you know found everywhere nowadays even in the deepest of mariana trench you are going to find these microplastics you are going to find them on mount everest all the mountains you are going to find them on land you are even get, going to find them in air now when these microplastics are floating in the ocean obviously the fish the whales the dolphins the shrimps they are going to consume those microplastics if a plastic is say lying on the land say in a plane so obviously the animals are going to eat it. Many times you will see that cows eat polythene bags because they don't have anything to eat. So they eat polythene bags and because of them, these cattle die. So obviously, so this was the example of plastic and these microplastics, they are very small pieces. Even there is further breakdown of microplastics. So these smaller pieces, which are also known as microfibers, these microfibers are found in air. These microfibers are found in municipal drinking water. Thousands and thousands of birds, animals, fishes, they die every year because of this microplastic inhaling. They inhale those microplastics and they die of it. Obviously, these microplastics are also found in other organisms because these fish, they are being consumed by other aquatic organisms. These fish are being consumed by humans. So when these microplastics and microfibers find their way into the animal and human digestive tract, they can block your digestive tract. In some cases, they will be eliminated normally through your digestive tract out of your body. In some cases, they will block your digestive tract. In some cases, they are going to interfere with your organs. They may even damage your organs. In humans, these microplastics, microfibers can accumulate and can reduce your hunger. So there are a whole lot of ways through which these microplastics can affect your health, friends. Also, as I have already told you, the plastics which are found on the land, they can be eaten by different types of animals. They can be eaten by elephants, tigers, zebras, camels, cattle. Cattle includes goats, buffaloes, cows. All of them eat them and they can even die because of it. Got it, friends? So, a whole lot of problems are associated with these microplastics and plastics. Now, one thing, friends. Suppose... If there is plastic in the ocean, not microplastic. Suppose if there is plastic in the ocean. So it will be difficult to recover those plastics from the ocean. But it is not impossible. By some manner, plastics can be cleaned away from the ocean by using appropriate technology. But if that plastic is broken down into microplastics, after that plastic has converted itself into microplastics, it will become virtually impossible to recover it from ocean systems. So it becomes very important from the point of view of environmentalists and different governments that steps should be taken to clean our rivers. Steps should be taken for the proper disposal of plastic waste in the cities so that they don't make their way to the oceans. Because once they do, 
it will be very difficult to remove them from the oceans also friends one important factor you should know that plastics not only after their formation are dangerous even their formation process is dangerous when we are manufacturing conventional plastics so during the manufacturing of conventional plastics one or one by product is produced which is known as dioxin this dioxin is highly toxic and this is a very potent carcinogen this is toxic and at the same time it is carcinogen carcinogen that element which causes cancer so you will say you can see that even the manufacture of plastics is dangerous because it is producing an unwanted byproduct which is heavily toxic so i hope this video was helpful for you friends a lot of information with respect to plastics have been given to you i hope this video was helpful your awareness about this plastics has increased so thank you for watching this video friends any comments you can leave in the comment box below if you want to give me some suggestions you can also give that please follow me on instagram friends also you can subscribe to my channel and you can watch the hindi version of the video if you want thank you for watching friends have a great day goodbye and take care